what's going on YouTube? Today we're going to talk about the number one way you can maximize the profits on characters you don't even play on. There's a lot to go over today, so let's just kind of jump right on into it. The first thing that you're going to need is characters, and that's all that you technically need. But let's talk about the couple things that can help optimize this, and that is the Somerset DLC and ESO Plus. If you have ESO Plus, you have the Somerset DLC. If you just have Somerset, you can still work around that. But let's talk about it. So, numero uno, you're going to come right on down to here with your main character. You probably have decently high crafting with him. You're going to grab the jewelry root on the right and the consumables on the left. And you're going to grab all those. I have in my inventory. And let's talk about what we're going to be doing here today. So, for those of you who don't know, there's actually a limited pool of items that are actually pulled from your daily crafting writs, which means that if you make extra, you will just have them. What does that mean? It means that, so say I had six necklaces when I pulled the quest, I could just immediately go turn it in. So the solution is, to save your time, is actually to just make extra of everything. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's going to bog down my inventories and whatnot, but you're doing this on accounts that you don't even need to worry. I just realized I just made the wrong one. Oops. Destroy all these bad boys. Make sure you make the right ones. So, you're going to be crafting yourself extra. It's that simple. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Get rid of the trait. And you're going to be making extra of these bad boys. We're going to make six and six rings. My solution is is make three times the amount that you need. Um, and we're just going to kind of go through and make three times the amount of everything that we need. And you can see that this quest is ready to turn in. If I had those in my inventory as soon as I pulled the quest, I could immediately go and turn it in. You can see the turn in spots right there. So, why this is amazing. Basically, you just sit extra characters right here. You log into every single one of them once a day. Um, we'll talk about other things that you could do to get, you know, maximize characters once a day. So your goal is going to be do the quests on the left, quests on the right, go run around in a circle, make extra of the items that are requested, and go turn them in. And then slowly over time, eventually you have everything. See, where it gets tricky is for these ones right here. So for example, alchemy. Uh, by the way, if you hit uh, the right thumbstick in, uh, it'll actually tell you basically what you need to make. And you can still, there's still obviously ways that you can create this, but you know, you try to use ones where you have a bunch of ingredients and don't waste scrib jelly and columbine and certain other things, lady smock, all that other stuff. Try to save those if you can. So it's asking for a damage magicka potion. It's going to want us to make, I believe, just one, but when we make it, it's going to give us four. So now we have four. We can turn in tomorrow if they ask for that. They may be they may ask for Ravage Health, but you know, if that's the case, if we make Ravage Health, make some extras, turn those in. It is a super easy way to complete your writs in a fast fashion without guessing. Now let's talk about why it is asking for these specific items. Because that's a good question. You know, what what exactly is it going to pull from? And this is where ESO Plus can be very helpful. So I have max blacksmithing, which means it's going to want me to craft the creme de la creme. And actually, you see it's popped up auto-populate, even though that wasn't even the active quest. And it's going to tell me. If my smithing was not maxed, say it was... Say this was 9 out of 10, it would drop down. So your goal was going to get to get all your characters to 10 out of 10 so that they're all on the same track. You can still do this in the meantime, and this is where ESO Plus is amazing. So say you're at 1 out of 10 and you're using iron, you know, you still probably have a decent amount of iron. Just crank through those, complete your rich, you'll get inspiration. They'll slowly level up. And you can even make sure that their champion points are out. If you have the champion points are allocated towards the this perk right here, Meticulous Disassembly, now, why stuff like this is really good is, is that it gives you extra chances of getting uh, things when you deconstruct, and you're going to put the inspiration boost, not on this character, obviously, because he's maxed out, but put it this, combine these two traits together, 
you're getting a lot of inspiration and you're getting a lot of resources back because you're probably going to be deconstructing things at a lower level so you're going to want those raw mats back at that lower level for you as you level up so make sure you have those perks there um, and that way you can actually uh, get a little more time for your you know your inspiration so another thing that's really good about having characters who are beef caked up is, is that you actually get minor hirelings and what's interesting about minor hirelings is they're character bound and not account bound which means that if you are able to max out a character's crafting and you can get to three out of three hirelings or even one out of three hirelings that just means that they will only come once a day right now I believe they come once every six hours so once every six hours I'm basically getting free everything Alchemy ingredients, blacksmithing, clothing, enchanting, jewelry crafting, provisioning, woodworking. Every every hour. I actually don't think jewelry crafting. I'm a liar about that. But the other ones, it's true. So, you're getting five things in mail, and each one of them rolls for gold mats. You can get anything. Anything can come from these, and that's why it's so good. You can get tempering alloys. You can get rosin. You can get writs. Like, there's crazy loot pools that you can get uh, from the hirelings and from turning these in. And all you need to do to do this, it will take five minutes per character. Take them to Somerset, put them right smack dab here, open your mail. If you have hirelings, if not, just keep grinding them out. And then, bada bing, bada boom, that character will slowly level up. And then you'll be able to get more and more rewards every day because. You're going to get between 5 to 10k's worth of value in mats on a max level hireling character per character. I have 11 characters on this account. So in theory, just by logging in and spending 30 minutes doing this, I could be making like 60 to 110k just by logging in. And use opening the hirelings. That doesn't even include doing the crafting writs because that's a whole other separate uh, track. Of free things and I'll actually do that right now while we're talking and some other kind of key points that I want to kind of discuss with people is I hear this a lot I don't have the I don't have the skill points to do it you know I don't I don't have the skill points and things that I need uh, to accomplish this well there's some easy ways to get skill points that not everyone tells you and actually we're gonna talk about that real quick too so do you see where it says one out of two and we're actually gonna so what I just did for those of you who don't know is I hit the map button and then I held X it's between to the bottom there you can see depending on your console it'll be different now what is this this is a group event each public dungeon has a group event every single zone has one or two group events there in the public dungeon which is this symbol right here every time you complete these public events Every character, you gain a skill point, which means if you go to a DLC zone where you're guaranteed to have a way shrine, and usually the DLC zones are pretty small, I mean, the Somerset map is not, you know, huge. You can ride your horse from here to here in about 30 seconds. You can easily get those skill points. So if you're running out of skill points, go from zone to zone. And you can see if you've already done it, because it'll say completed 4-1-20, 4-1-20. See, here's one. Uh, I heard of the system's not here. Oh, this one's in uh, Black Reach. Ignore, ignore that one. But see the rift. Um, I've not done the group event in the rift, which means that if I go to the rift right now and I go to their public dungeon, and you see it's zero out of one, if I go there and I complete the boss, who's t so it's a boss. And I do that. It's, it, they call it a group event. Generally, it's got a little more health. Sometimes there's some mechanics to it. But usually for the base game ones, it's literally just like have a pulse, go kill a thing with like 300k health. Not super difficult. Skill point. Every zone can get you one or two skill points. And there are a lot of zones. And so that's the easiest way to get skill points without having to do the main story or having to do all fine sky shards. And, and the backup way, obviously, to do that is doing the DLC story, uh, because DLC storylines give you one um, one skill point per completion of a uh, a mission, basically. Whereas, you know, the normal like if you go to Glenumbra and you start doing stories, it's like one out of every three. 
And uh, we don't have time for that on our uh, our good Christian servers. We have things to do, people to see, uh, dungeons to complete. Not really. I'm actually not a huge dungeon fan. But I could be in the future. You never know. So the best way to do this, again, is you go around after you pick them all up uh, and you make extra. I'm actually not making a whole lot of extras just because this is my main account. The side accounts, the best thing you can do, throw all the extra BS in your bank spaces, clear them all out, and make them Ritz, Ritz accounts. And what that means is, is you're just going to log on to them. Who am I forgetting to do here? So we did alchemy. Uh, you're going to make all that stuff, and you're going to chuck it in there, and you're going to have extras. Clear out your bank space. Um, I've discussed doing a video if you guys need to like know like what like what pieces are uh, like worth keeping in your inventory. So if you guys want a video on that, I've been kind of going back and forth on whether or not I think that would be helpful. So if you want that, just let me know, and I'll make that happen for you. And I forget where the cooking station is here. That's what we're looking for. And, oh, I forgot, it's this stove here. So we are going to go to quest only so I don't have to look for it. And, again, it's it's really this simple. I mean, even with just me talking, you know, we're not even, like, eight minutes into here. And that's of me being heavily distracted. It would take you a couple minutes per character. Especially if you have, and, again, this is why ESO Plus is so helpful because all of your resources are going to be shared per um, account. So like all of your crafting resources, you don't have to pull it out. You don't have to do any of that mumbo jumbo. But if you did, you can always run to the bank nearby, craft the extra stuff. Because you, you know, just have extras. And then bada bing bada boom. So now we're going to open all these bad boys. And we're going to get a sealed crap. You know. Decent stuff, you know, all this, everything that you're you're ripping out of these things. Yeah, see, there's a wax, there's a cuda, there's a blue grain, like the, the, the berez juice, a recipe, a bunch of flour. Like, this is stuff that has tangible value. And this was one, uh, rosin, we just made like 30k in random bits and bobs and it took us 10 minutes and actually it gave us 4.7 uh, K gold just for completing those missions so it's really I, I promise you it's something that everyone can do and for those of you who are wondering how you get started um, and I'll put the actual quest giver on the screen uh, but the actual lines to start them in all the starter zones uh, one you only need to be licensed in one to get the actual crafting board for three there's one person in the Mages Guild, and there's one person over here, a blacksmithing guy over here. You talk to them, it'll be a black arrow quest, but you complete that, then your access, you get the access to the daily quests. And then you can start doing these also. So we obviously pulled from the high loot pool, obviously, so you know, might be a bit before you get there. But what's good is you do this on a new character, and you're going to be getting inspiration and XP towards your crafting so that's going to put you towards the hirelings faster and towards maxing out your actual crafting on those accounts now another big thing that I strongly strongly recommend is that when you pull stuff from a dungeon do not just deconstruct it if it's a higher inspiration gain put it in your bank it is as simple as talking to your banker and just chucking it in there that's as easy as it is you just Chuck those bad boys in there, pull them out of another character, deconstruct them. If it's a high inspiration gain item, um, just just chuck it in there. Same with um, learning different traits. So the only I examples where you can get more uh, kind of inspiration without deconstructing is obviously the ones where you can't deconstruct anything. If you want a whole guide on how to max out your alchemy, max out your provisioning, um, I'll give you the quick heads and tails of it. I don't want to go too far in depth, but... Alchemy, learn every trait. There's a list online. I usually pull. It's Outcast's website. It's like, combine all these things together. You learn every trait. Once you have every trait learned from non-DLC items, you get extra XP towards maxing it out. Boom. Provisioning, this is what I like to do. So you have a lot of green provisioning recipes. Or you, maybe you don't. Hang on, i got to turn this off, quests. So what I like to do is find something that I have a whole bunch of. So this is one to four, so I can make a bunch of these because I had a shit ton of wheat and I recognize that wheat's garbage. 
And then when I need, say that I get to level 15, I'm going to be looking for something like this, but not like this because I like my flower. Now, small game and millets? Garbage. Make a bunch of those then. Ah, 25 to 29. Fish? Super easy to get a shit ton of. I start making these. Then you, well, this is another good one too for 49 to 50, or, or 49, or 45, <laughs> 45 to 50, 49. It's put to use, game, useless, cheese, useless. Throw them together. So that's like, but say like, you know, you have a shit ton of apples. You know, you can make these apples. So you got a bunch of bananas. And you can go and look into Sean at cheap green recipes and just make those. Like that's the easiest way to max out provisioning. And it's worth maxing out. Um, on as many characters as you can. Again, you want the hirelings, and you want to get all those things. So, with the hirelings, and with doing the writs, there are people that make two to three hundred k a day on an hour's worth of work for just logging in and sitting right here. You can see there's a bunch of people sitting here meandering around, and you can see that they're not all like you know crazy high levels. Well, some of them are high levels, but this is a great place for you to go and this is where I strongly recommend that you guys go because you deserve to make as much bang for your buck on your character you say you made a character and you don't like him anymore you don't want to delete him because why would you delete him but you know you deconstructed some things on him you did some quests on him he's got some skill points make him do this you don't need to do this with 11 characters or 16 which I believe is the maximum or some people who do this with alt accounts and do this with 32 accounts, or 32 characters, just to get essentially a, an income for doing the easiest quests in the game. You don't have to do that. You could do this with a couple characters. You saw me make a, a bunch of money easily for doing a quick quest, wash my hands of it, easy money. And that's what I want you guys to start doing because it is easy and I really think it appreciates a lot of people's time, like myself who work overtime majority of the week you know sometimes we get on and we're just like oh what in the world do i need to do on eso to not fall too far behind financially because i gotta pay my dues i gotta you know put my guild trader bids in huh i just need a little bit i just need to make a little bit of money today this is how you can make that good chunk of change and not have to do a whole bunch of work and two kind of beefs up your characters a little bit in case one day you know you want to start farming more dailies with them we already talked about daily quests but honestly get those character daily quests too but that's a whole separate discussion that i will jump into with you guys in the future you better remember to like and subscribe to jake clips or you should i might have to pluck your eyes if you don't or better yet i'll skip rope with your entrails do it now subscribe ta-ta off with you